Hi everybody, my name is Jackie Balan and I am here tonight to introduce our show. For those dedicated quarantine watchers, this is the second night of performances. And for those of you that couldn't make it to the first night, I pity you sincerely for not seeing those spectacular performances. And so I'm here today, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I, I want to thank. Is somebody gonna get that? So now that we are away from the dogs, I can properly introduce our show. And I want to first thank you. Jacqueline! Jackie, I need you! Back to business. I want to thank you for coming to our show. I know that it took a lot of effort to really just click on that. Okay, I'm out on the front porch now. It's raining, it's dark, but this is happening. So I really hope that there's no more rude interruptions. Like Son of a Okay, so I'm in the bathroom now. It's fine, everything's fine. And I can finally thank you all for clicking that link and coming to our show tonight. Really A plus effort. Um, so we are a small group of actors who studied at Atlantic Acting School. And we decided now was the perfect time to put on this show because we're bored, you're bored, so why not give us all something to do? We've got sketches, we've got scenes, some dramatic, some funny, we've got monologues. Really, it's just pure entertainment, folks. So thanks for tuning in, and let's get this party started. Occupied! stay awake. Oh. Hi everyone. My name is Colleen Sample and this is Pumpkin. In case you didn't recognize it, that was Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis Presley. Speaking of Elvis, our first act tonight comes from a play called Graceland by Ellen Byron. Featuring our own Selma Duchanovich and Rachel T. Ruth, the scene is June 4, 1982. 5 a.m. Graceland is slated to open in just three days. Fans are lined up outside trying to hold their spots. Only one can enter the king's home first. Hey. Hello. Nice chair. Thank you. I was here first. Pardon? I said I was here first. I was. I was here first. Oh. I think I was. Excuse me? I, oh, I hope you don't mind, ma'am, but I think I was here first. I really do. I was here first. I put my pillow down before you put your chair down. What? 
well, I, I heard you put your chair down in the grass and my pillow was already down by then. That's crazy. That is just crazy. How the hell could you hear that? Grass doesn't make any noise. A chair is louder than a pillow. What the hell are you talking about? A pin is louder than a feather, but that doesn't mean you could hear it fall in the grass. I put my pillow down first. But my tent was already up. I sat down before you, and that's what counts. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. What the hell are you doing here anyway? Why don't you just chase after one of these teenage idol types and leave this to the people who really care? I care. You care? I care. What could you possibly know? He was born on January 8th, 1935 at 12.02 p.m. His identical twin, Jesse Guerin, was still born and buried the next day. He attended La Lore Elementary School and got his first guitar on his 11th birthday. It cost $12.75 and his mama bought it for him at the Tupelo Hardware Store. He made his first record on Monday, July 5th at Sun Studio and his whole life changed when his mama died on August 14th, 1958. What'd she die of? Heart attack, complicated by hepatitis. It was the first song he ever recorded. My happiness in 1935. Vernon. When was his father born? April 4th, 1916. I was here first. Who wrote Heartbreak Hotel? Fred Axton's mother. Who was his favorite actress to work with? Cabaret. When did he make his first screen test? April 15th, 1965. And he read from some play called The Rainmaker. What's his favorite cigarette? Elvis didn't smoke. Hmm. Of course, Elvis didn't smoke, Lord. I knew that. You just threw me off with all that other stuff. It's early. I don't think good early. I was here first. Now one damn minute. I was the first person to enter the meditation garden in Gravesite when it opened. And I was the first person to go into the museum when it opened. And I was the first person to touch his statue when they unveiled it. And now that in three days, when they're finally going to open his home, the most sacred place of them all, I am damn well going to be the first person to step foot through those doors. I have to be. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I have to be. have to be. I have to get to him. Get to him? Are you crazy? He's dead. I know, but I'm gonna make him come back. If you love somebody enough, you can. I was watching this movie yesterday, it was called Brigadoon, and Gene Kelly made a whole village come back just because he loved the girl so much. What the hell are you talking about? Well, if I got in there first and was just by myself for five minutes, I could talk well, to hold him. on. First of all, they're never gonna let you in there alone. They got guards on the laundry shelves, for Christ's sakes. And second, I was here first. Yeah, but if you're first, don't they give you a prize or something? I could ask for my prize to be just five minutes alone in there. My cousin was the first person in line when they opened the new Kmart in her town, and they gave her all sorts of stuff. Oh, come on. Does this look like a Kmart to you? I have to go in first. Who the hell do you think you are? I have devoted my life to this man, to preserving his memory, to showing the world that there's only one true singer, and that is Elvis. Turned my whole basement into a memorial room for him. Threw away my kid's ping pong table and set up my whole collection. I got pictures, I got records, I got the cloth that he wept wiped the sweat from his face in Vegas, 72. I got every liquor bottle ever made as an Elvis statue. Even TV shows have interviewed me. I've loved this man with the truest and purest love possible since I was 15. And if you think I'm gonna just hand that over to some kid, all I gotta say to you is no. Repeat, no. God damn, repeat. God damn damn way. I have to go in first or it won't work. What won't work? Are you talking about some magic? Or you're one of these crazy cult people. Oh, I am getting the guards on you. I'll 
please, I don't know nothing about that stuff. I'm getting you thrown off these grounds. Okay, okay, fine. You go ahead and get him, but you can't prove nothing. Besides, then they'll probably chase us both away. That's a beautiful suit. What? I, I've always wanted a suit like that. What are you talking about? Well, they never come in my size. Why not? What size do you wear? Oh, I guess about a three. A three? Well, that just ain't healthy. How are you gonna be a real woman to wear a scrawny little size like a three? Ma Weebo always said that if a woman ain't got a shelf, she should at least be as thin as a sideways door. You're Hubo? Uh, Weebo, that's my husband. He was best friends with my brother Bo, and Weebo is like little Bo, see? <laughs> sure, Weebo. Well, that's about the name I'd expect from a guy who thinks that women should look like sideways doors. What the hell am I doing talking like this? Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. What? I'll tell you why I got to go in there first. Shoot. Well, the day that it opens is also Bo's birthday. Nebo? No, Bo, my brother. Oh. Oh, that explains everything. You want to get in there first so you can get Elvis's ghost to wish your brother a happy birthday. Look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you a dollar and you can go buy him a card, okay? I, I can't. I can't send it to him. What's the matter? Can't spell his address. <laughs> He's dead. Oh. I, oh. Well, <sighs> Well, why'd you let me go on like that? That is a terrible thing to do. I, I'm sorry. I accept your apology. He died in the war. Korean? No, Vietnam. He was an army man, they're the toughest. Oh, I know it. My husband was army too. No, you're kidding. Here we are, two total strangers, and, and both of us are related to the army. Small world. You know, the funny thing is, and I don't mean ha-ha funny, I mean like funny, funny. Well, there are some people you just can't see them going on past a certain point. It's like that with Bo. I can never think what he'd be doing later on, and I don't think he could either, and, and that's why he joined up. I know what you mean. I, uh, I had this best friend back in high school, Francine. She and I, we were like sisters, just so close. But Francie was wild. She drove like a maniac, went all the way with the boys, drank like a truck driver. She was killed senior year in a car crash. I guess I kind of expected it all along. I talk to him sometimes. At least I try to. Elvis was his favorite person in the whole world. I bet they're probably best friends by now. Well, if that's so, I bet Francie's friends with him too. We were crazy for him together. What if they're dating up there? Who? Elvis and Francine. <laughs> that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Dating in heaven? <laughs> Killer. Well, who knows? Ain't nobody I ever heard of who got first-hand knowledge of what goes on up there. For all we know, they could have Friday night beer blasts and uh, drive-in movies. <laughs> Stop. No, I, I, I know that can't be, because if heaven is in the clouds, then all those cars would come crashing through. I can't believe you. You're like one of these people that they find in the woods after 10 years. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of gravity? What? Gravity, hmm. it's the thing that keeps the things in the sky, like planes and cars, 
from falling on your head. Now, wait, I, I still don't see what all this has to do with you getting in there first. See, I got something I need Bo to help with. And Elvis was the most important person in Bo's life. I, he walked like him, dressed like him. He even tried to talk like him. So since Bo's birthday is also the very first day Elvis's house is open, I figured that if I were the first person inside, everything would all come together. I'd get a sign from the heavens. Weebo would see me on TV and be real sorry about what he'd done and everything would be all taken care of. Honey, I'm gonna tell you something and I hope you'll understand and not take it too personal. This is nutty talk. Now why don't you just go and run along? I don't care. I've got to do something. Bo was the only person who ever really talked to me, and I'm sure Elvis would help. He's such a good person. Honey, they're both dead. May they rest in peace. I know, but there are some things more powerful than death even, like in Brigadoon. Y your mama ever tell you about fairy tales? I don't remember. She died when I was little. What's your name? Mine's Rudy, Rudy Malaire. Huh? Oh, um, uh, Bev, Bev Davies. Bev, that's a nice name. Bev, would you like a hard boiled egg? I've got one left. Would you like it? No, no, I hate them. Besides, uh, I got everything I need right here. Hello, I am Daniela Lucia and you just caught me in the middle of my guilty pleasure. Eating jalapeno poppers. I just can't resist them. Anyway, you are about to be transported into the wilderness of Alaska, into a cabin where two strangers, Rosanna and Henry, are forced to deal with their past and the unexpected discovery of how intertwined their stories are. The two talented actors are Colleen Sample and Michael Jennings, and this is Brilliant Traces by Cindy Lou Johnson. Enjoy. You must be just thrilled to pieces that I blew in here. Look, it wasn't your fault you showed up here. I don't blame you. Thank you. Yeah, you, you were just driving. You drove here. That's how you have explained it, and that is how I understand it. Although I must say no one has ever accidentally driven here before. I didn't drive here accidentally. But you came here on purpose. No, I just, I came here by chance. By chance? Well, I think I've explained or <laughs> tried to explain that I'm not quite clear on what exactly led me here. I was just in my car and it was a very hot day and I thought I'd drive a few feet to get a little breeze on me. And then I suddenly you, started you, you, I don't understand what you mean it was hot. You keep saying it was hot. I don't understand what you mean it was hot. It was a hot day. The sun was beating down. It was hot. Hot? You know, Hot. Uh, the, the sun hasn't beaten down around here in months. Well, it was beating down when I started driving. Exactly where were you when you started driving? Arizona. Arizona? Yes. <laughs> you started driving in Arizona. 
and kept driving alone nonstop by chance to Alaska? This is where my car died. Jesus. What? Jesus Christ. What? What in God's name happened to you in Arizona that made you drive all the way to Alaska? Nothing happened. Nothing happened? You were just at your wedding in Arizona, walking up the aisle and, and suddenly you thought, I feel like taking a drive. And so you zipped out of the church, hopped into your car, and then you started driving and kept driving until your car died out there? No, no, that's not what happened. And what happened? Why do you care what happened? You only took me in because I reminded you of a sick dog. That's not what I meant. Well, it's what you said. And if I may say so, I personally am slightly curious about a man who lives like a hermit when he's not on an oil rig, which already is just another form of living like a hermit. And then when finally someone shows up at his godforsaken door, he only takes them in because they remind him of a sick dog. And then he cooks their shoes. But that was an accident. I'm just not used to total strangers' satin slippers being in my oven. You put them there. It's just because they were on the floor looking like they were just what? Some... Pathetic. They, they depressed the hell out of me. They looked like they were make-believe. Just all satiny and lacy. Little silver slippers. Like for a doll or something. I mean, who even has shoes like that? And then on top of it, they were all ruined and I couldn't fix them. I knew I couldn't fix them. And they were just tossed on the floor. And one was up straight and the other was just pointing off. And they were all droopy and crumbled. And what the hell was I supposed to do with them? You just show up here and this is my life and you just show up here with these ruined satin make-believe doll shoes? And what am I supposed to do? Maybe I, I, I put them in the oven. I, I couldn't stand looking at them. Maybe I cooked them on purpose. I'm sorry, but I couldn't fix them. Don't you get it? What I'll do, um, I'll call AAA. AAA? Get somebody out here to fix my car. There's no AAA out here. Well, then a mechanic. Look, there is a whiteout out there. The phones are down. The roads are impassable. No one goes out in a whiteout. Well, there must be a hotel or something. A hotel? Yes, I feel, I mean, I can plainly see that I'm in your way. And I just don't want to be in anybody's way. I'm... Sorry that I drove my car so hard. I probably shouldn't have, but as I said, I was just getting in and I started driving and I somehow lost track of time. And you, you lost track of time? You mean you lost track of weeks? I don't know. Well, you must have been driving a couple of weeks. I don't know. You don't know. You just have no idea. No idea at all? No. I was just trying not to fly through the windshield. I was trying not to crash into space. I'm still trying. Even as I'm standing here, I'm trying. You feel in this minute, while you're standing there talking to me, you might crash into space. Yes. Right this moment, while you're standing there talking to me, you're hurtling forward? Yes. Well, you're not. You're not. You're just, you're mistaken. You're just standing there. It's hard to say. It isn't hard to say. It's hard for you to say. It isn't hard for me to say. I can see you there. I can see you very plainly. You see what you can see. I see what I can see. I mean, we, all of us, see what we can see. 
That's all. What else could we see? I don't know, but sometimes we might get a, a hunch that there's something important, vital, just going on right beyond our peripheral vision. Sometimes we might get a hunch like that. No, I don't get hunches like that. Well, you're lucky. No, my hunch is, is that something is going on right now and it's not right beyond your peripheral vision. It's staring you so hard in the face, it's about to knock your eyes out. Except I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. You know exactly what it is. What is it? Why didn't you get married? What? What? You got a telegram informing you that your fiance was wanted for murder in Nevada, or that he was married to seven other women in seven other states, or that he was uh, a woman, or no, what? No, no. Nothing like that. Then what? I just... I was just trying not to let go of something that I couldn't... I couldn't get back. And what? Look, I'm not, I'm not sitting here. If you could understand that simple fact, you might be able to see why I'm in no position to explain why I didn't go through with the wedding. You are not sitting here. No. You are just not in a position at this time to say why you didn't go through with the wedding because you're not sitting here. Yes. You are not here? No. Actually, no. You're just not here. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, that's fine, that's fine, whatever. I don't care if you're here or not. I mean, you seem to be here to me, but you know, whatever. You know, just... Just tell me one thing, just tell me from wherever you are. You know, I, you don't have to be here to tell me this one thing. Just tell me from wherever you are, okay? Tell me what happened. What do you mean? I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, what happened? You arrived here in a wedding gown, so I assume you were fairly close to getting married. On the verge, so, just tell me what happened. I, I'm not asking for anything complicated. I don't need to know why you left or any of that. I just want to know how, how you left. You know, you stood up, you said, I need some time to think. I'm no. not ready to get married. No. I... no. No, I didn't stand up and say anything. Okay. Okay. So what? So what did you do? I had a problem with my feet. Your feet? My feet would not move forward. I was in the back of the church and my feet would not move. You mean like you had a cramp or something? No, no, not like that. I felt like I was a frozen bird. Like I was an animal flight, but I was frozen, encased in ice. I could see things and hear things all around me, but I was frozen. Uh-huh. Yeah, but um, what did you do? I mean, exactly what did you do? I'm just trying to get a sort of picture. What did you do exactly with this ice and foot problem? I just kept looking at the back of his head. That's all. He was up at the altar so I could see the back of his head. He keeps his hair very short, so it's very soft back there. My heart went out to him. I mean, my heart opened up and something inside of me wanted to rush out to him. Something was fluttering inside of me, desperate to reach him, but I was frozen and not moving. 
I just could not move. That's all. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching our show. I hope you've been entertained so far. My name is Brittany Alley and I'm an actor and a writer and I live on Roosevelt Island. Roosevelt Island sits on the East River in between Queens and the Upper East Side and back in the day it was known as Welfare Island. My apartment building is actually the former lunatic asylum for women. Back in the 1800s, this was a horrendous place where doctors and nurses would abuse patients and torture them until an undercover reporter named Nellie Bly came in and exposed the truth. I'm fascinated by Nellie's story and her courage, and I wrote a piece as her, which you can catch next week in our night two show. Speaking of incredible women, our next act is Miss Roxy Johnson. She is incredible. I love watching her work. She's performing a monologue from The Divorcee Shower by Lavinia Roberts. Enjoy. So much for coming to my divorcee shower all of you I can't imagine going through this divorce without you Whew. oh I have been practicing my vows I Andrea Collins promise to practice self-care self-compassion self-love from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health to love and to cherish myself Till I die. Oh, of course, I don't want to forget about the honeymoon with myself. So, I was thinking for my romantic rendezvous with myself that maybe I should take a weekend at Heavenly Spa Services. Maybe Pure Bliss Massages. Though I hear Vegas is great this time of year. Well, while I have you all here, I have some wonderful news to share with all of you. A surprise about the little bundle of joy. <laughs> I'm not expecting. That's right. I've decided not to have any children. Zero. None. It's the least I can do for the planet. I'm so excited. I mean, I've always meant to never have any children, so this is just a dream come true. I'm going to be excellent at it, not being a mother. Just comes so naturally to me, my lack of maternal instincts. So as far as gifts for the no baby shower, I'm registered at Macy's. But feel free to get anything on the list that you like. It's the usual type of thing you find on the no baby shower registry. I'm going to need a new alarm clock for sure. For all the extra four nights of sleep I'll be getting, and a new bikini for all the extra vacations I'll be able to afford and have time for not having any kids. Everybody ready for ice cream? Straight out of the carton. Oh, and we still have the three-tiered just divorce cake. Isn't that decapitated groom cake topper? Just adorable. <laughs> Some artists record an album of songs they've written. 
Some artists write poetry and perform spoken word and publish a book or two. Some artists create artwork as a form of self-expression. Some artists create shows to talk about what's going on in the world. I'm Adrian Witt, and as you can see, I am not a fan of boxes. Up next is Jackie Belan and Emma Bass performing a scene from Rabbit by Nina Rain. On Bella's 29th birthday, a group of friends and former lovers meet for a celebration. But what they don't know is Bella's father is terminally ill. Thank you. 29. 29. To me. To you. Who's actually invited? Oh, people. Nobody knows each other. Nobody I know. No, men, women. It's going to be a nightmare. I decided I'd let all my friends meet each other. Why? I don't know. You know, I woke up this morning, six in the morning. I rolled over. One of my earplugs fell out, like sleeping on a pebble. I woke up. I sat up, inhaled a frond of snot. My nose is so blocked at the moment. Or you. Went into the bathroom, looked in the mirror, squeezed a white head on my neck, and plucked the hair out of my nipple. Happy birthday. So talk to me. Tell me about work. Okay. Work. Well, work. I don't know. What can I say? I just hate the fucking women. Yeah. The women are the worst. Of course they're the worst. I don't mind. Well, the men aren't great, but the women. I know. Don't tell me. There's this one doctor, right? Don't tell me. This fucking little uterus. Dr. Goulding, I haven't told you. So tell me. I have to shadow her before I qualify. They warned me she was cold. Full of attitude, unpleasant. But there's nothing I can do. Ask to change? I can't. Even though she's a cow. Why not? I'll be accused of discriminating. Discriminating against what? She's a woman. Yes, yeah, so are you. So obviously I can't ask to be transferred. It would look so bad. And half the time I can't even understand what she's asking me to do. Oh no. So she gets impatient with me. And she's fucking pushy. Ambitious? And she's a complete man-eater. Pressed Alex up against the wall one day. Stuck her hand down his trousers. Can you imagine? He didn't know what to do. Christ. I know. Sounds like a nightmare. And I wouldn't care. I wouldn't give a toss. I mean, it's only three more weeks. But then someone told me she's going to be made a registrar. Promotion? I mean, registrar. She's my age. It's unheard of. And more importantly, she's a crap doctor. <laughs> Pella. Yeah, yeah. This is serious. You'll get promoted. And you see how depressing this is? She's talentless. Emily. I know, I know. Emily, listen to me. But Listen to me, Emily. Let me tell you something. Stop looking over your shoulder. With this girl. This girl is irrelevant. The last thing you should do, my, my father, listen to me. My father always says the same thing to me when I get like this. We're all competitive. We're all ambitious. But he says the thing about envy is you- What? What about envy? Is this envy? Yes. Oh. His theory is I that thought it was just rage. Much as I hate to quote him on anything, he says it's fine to suffer envy. But? But the last thing you should do is vent your envy openly, because envy is like farts. Envy is like farts? 
everyone suffers from it, but you've let it out. You don't smell very nice, and everyone moves away from you. That's good. I know. Don't dwell on things. Don't look over your shoulder. Keep moving on. Leave what's past behind. Yes. Right. I know. I wrote 1995 on a check the other day. What was that all about? <laughs> Hello? No, I'm just... No, I'm listening. So he's... Right. Mm. What time? What time is that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But this happened before, hasn't it? What did Mum say? Okay. Okay. Well, well, if he does, well, if he does, then ring me. All right. I'll keep it on. Bye. I hate the fucking room they've put him in. Bella, I'm sorry. Bella. Okay. You're not okay. Listen. Listen to me. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. I know. Do you think I should be with him now? Do you? No, it's your birthday. But should I be with him now? Tell me what to do. I can't tell you what to do. Yes, you can. You can't. Someone else is with him now, right? One of my brothers taking turns. The night shift. And your mum? Of course she's there. Always bloody there. The rest of us take turns because he's far too sociable to die when someone's in the room. He'll be busy entertaining them. Maybe this is all wrong. Maybe I should go. Then go. Don't agree with me. Don't just agree with me. I want you to tell me what to do. You're the doctor, what do you think? You think I should go? Yes. Why? Because I think you should be there, not here. Why didn't you say so before? Because you didn't ask me before. Bella, I don't know why you're here. Because I organized it. For God's sake, they're your friends, aren't they? They'll understand. I haven't told the others. Why not? I just haven't told them. I can't be bothered. You're a fucking idiot sometimes, you know that. You should have told them. You need people to know. Go. Now, when it doesn't matter, I'll tell them. I don't want to go. I've been there all day. I can't take any more. If he goes, he goes. And don't tell anyone anything. You wanted me to tell you what to do. So I'm telling you what to do. Listen, I wanted you to talk me out of it, not into it. People ringing. The reception's crap in here anyway. All you can do is be with him. So go and be with him. I thought there was nothing I could do about it. Bella. We don't get on. Dying. He's dying and we still don't get on. Nothing's changed. You should be there. How do you know I should be there? Because you'll regret it. When was the last time your dad died? 
All right, explain it to me. Tell me what it's like. Let's change the subject. No, explain it to me because I don't understand. You're changing the subject. I don't understand, so explain it to me. No! He's my dad, not yours! Someone's about to mow their lawn. It's happening a lot. Okay, well, we'll see if I can sneak in this intro real quick before it happens. Hi, my name is Emma Bass. I am currently quarantining from my hometown of Ann Arbor, Michigan. My neighbor started mowing the lawn and I was also worried that they would hear me talking to myself like a weirdo. So now I'm in the kitchen. I moved to New York three years ago, right after graduating high school. I could not wait to get out of my hometown, but now I'm back. That's fine. It's fine. Living with my parents again, also fine. But I do have two dogs. This is Mabel. And this is Chester. Now I'm in the living room with my reading glasses. I had cataract surgery when I was 14. Thank you, type 1 diabetes complications. But, fun fact, I also can't see that well far away. So... Now I'm going to send it over to my friend Michael Jennings. I'll be here supporting local restaurants one piece of cake at a time. Guten Tag. This is another episode of Kitty's Corner with Thomas and myself. And I, my name is... Hmm? This is not... We're not doing Kitty's Corner right now? Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Michael Jennings. And up next, we will have Selma Duchanovich. She'll be portraying an original piece where she will portray Sophia Sultan, who was an Ottoman queen known to be intelligent and cunning. She was part of a period of history known as the Sultanate of Women, where women held extraordinary political influence. Enjoy. The year is 1583, and we are in the Topkapı Palace located in Constantinople, capital of the Ottoman Empire. The second most powerful woman in the empire, Safiye Haseke, chief consort to Sultan Murad III, has already returned to her chambers to realize that all of her servants, advisors, and household staff have been taken and imprisoned by the most powerful woman in the empire, the Sultan's mother, Nubana Sultan. Extremely rare for sultans at the time, Safiye and Murad had had a monogamous relationship for 15 years, with only one heir produced. Nubana Sultan, fearing the instability of having only one heir, wants her son to take on more women and father more children, but believes that Safiye is a sorceress who has bewitched her son. In this moment, Safiye has realized what has happened to her household and is storming into Nubana's private chambers to confront Nubana, the Grand Vizier, the chief eunuchs of the palace, and the rest of her enemies to get her servants released. What have you done? Where is my household? Oh, Mehmet Pasha, I see you are a part of this as well. All of you are. Why am I not surprised? You've all been after me since before I even entered the harem, but what have I ever done? That's so wrong. Let me guess. You sent your daughters with the eunuchs so that my people would think they are safe. And yet I am the witch. I came here as a slave. It wasn't my choice. 
but you seem to think I somehow connived my way into the Sultan's heart. <laughs> if I was truly a witch, I would have left this place a long time ago. All of the palace's gold in silk and jewels rot when I think of the hills and dirt roads of my village. But I was so young. When the palace took me, I can't even remember its name. The only people I have now are the Sultan, my son, and yes, my servants. Because they are me 20 years ago, I know exactly what it's like. Please, please let them go. My servants, they are good people. Tell me where they are. I will go get them myself. Please. My Kira, she has a son. He is worried sick. Please, please let them go. <sighs> what if I allow other women? Will you leave my family alone? Will you tell me where my servants are? Please, please let them go. And if I let them go, you will allow other women? Yes. If you let them go, I will allow other women. And children. And children. But you mean. And you will get no trouble. And I will be no trouble, but you must leave my son alone. And then you will leave my son alone. Your son loves me. And do you love him? Of course I love him. Then why would you choose to save these servants and give up your husband to other women? Only someone like you would ask that question. I was born in the dirt just like them. They don't deserve to be in prison. And you expect me to help dirt like you and them? I expect you to let them go and then your son can have other women. And why should I believe you? Because my word is good. I don't tend to believe witches. I'm not a witch. Fine. Take her out of my chambers. Please. You will do it. I will consider your offer. Now leave my chambers. I understand. Oh, hey, I heard you might be dropping by, so thanks for coming. I'm Roxy Johnson, and I'm so happy to present our next performance. It's an original sketch written by Brittany Alley. So here is Brittany with Rachel T. Ruth performing in To Be or Not To Be A Bitch, something I know absolutely nothing about. Oh my God, hi. Hi! Ah! How are you? I'm good. How are you? I miss you so much. The apartment feels so empty without you. Yeah, I know. It is so weird being here and not being there. How has it been living with your mom again? <laughs> it's fine. 
she just creeps on Facebook all day. I mean, same. <laughs> oh, um, one of her best friend's daughter had a baby. Oh my God. Like not to be a bitch, but this baby is the ugliest baby I have ever seen. Ew. <laughs> yep. It's gross. Um, did you get Gabby's invite to her virtual birthday party? Yeah, she sent it to everyone. Ugh. She needs to chill. I mean, like, not to be a bitch, but I have better things to do than get on Zoom and wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> oh my god, like, not to be a bitch, but you literally don't. She's so stupid. I can't. Oh, um, you didn't like my cookie picture on Insta. I haven't been on in days, honestly. Well, my cookies came out really good. Do you want me to send you some? Not to be a bitch, but they probably taste like dog poop. Oh, you're so sweet, but I'm on a diet. Really? Because not to be a bitch, but you eat an ice cream sandwich every single fucking day. Oh my God. Stop it. You are so skinny. Me and my mom go to the gym together every day and everyone thinks we're sisters because she's like so cool. Not to be a bitch, but your mom is such a Karen. Aw, she's so fun. Tell her I said hi. I will. She wants to come visit us again when this is all over. <laughs> not to be a bitch, but can she not? What? Oh my god, she should. That'd be so fun. Remember last time she was trying on all my clothes? Yeah, not to be a bitch, but all your tops have sweat stains. Not to be a bitch, but you need to get your own Netflix account. Not to be a bitch, but you sound nothing like Ariana Grande. Well, not to be a big-ass bitch, but your Joan Rivers impression sounds nothing like her. <laughs> uh, not to be a bitch, but I've been looking for other apartments behind your back. <laughs> you guys are like you just been staring at each other for the last two minutes. Uh, is that your boyfriend? No wonder you wanted me to stay at my mom's? Well, you were the one who didn't want him quarantined with us. Oh my god, you know what? I am glad I left. I needed a fucking break. You needed a break? Really? Oh, whatever. Whatever. I have to go. But I miss you. Oh my God. I miss you so much. We should Zoom every day. Yes. Okay. Bye. Oh, I love you. Tell your mom I said hi. You bitch. Hi, my name is Selma Duchanovich and I'm streaming in from the laundry room of my parents' house in Seattle, Washington. Um, a little bit about myself, I consider myself to be a really passionate person, um, especially when it comes to this craft that we do. Um, as writers, directors, actors, what have you, we have a unique responsibility to be the storytellers of our generation um, and to tell stories that don't often get told or from, that are from perspectives that don't get attention. Um, to know me, you need to know this. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to announce the next scene. Um, two wonderful actresses, Colleen Sample and Adrian Witt, they're doing a scene from Crimes of the Heart by Beth Henley. When sisters Lenny and Meg reunite after their youngest sister is arrested for shooting her husband, tensions rise as past and present collide. Enjoy. Anybody home? May? May? Oh! Oh! oh well, May! Why, Lenny? Oh, Meg, why, Maggie? Hey, Lenny. Why didn't you call? Did you fly in? We are getting so old. Oh, I called for heaven's sake, of course I called. Well, I never talked to you. Well, I know. I'll let the phone ring right off the hook. 
Well, as a matter of fact, I've been out all morning seeing to Babe. Now, just what's all this business about Babe? Huh. And Zachary? You say somebody shot Zachary? Yes, they have. Well, good Lord, is he dead? No, but it's in the hospital. He was shot in the stomach. In the stomach? Mm. How awful. Well, do they know who shot him? Well, who is it? Who? Who? It's Babe. They're all saying that Babe shot him. Everybody's saying it, and they took her off to jail. Jail? Good Lord, jail? Well, who's saying it? Who? Everyone. The policeman, the sheriff, Zachary, Babe, even Babe herself. Oh, it's horrible. It's just God's horrible. sake. For God's oh, sake. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's just horrible. Oh, now, Lenny, just calm down. Just calm down, okay? You want some Coke? Here, let me get you a Coke. Oh. Why? Why would she shoot him? Why? I mean, I spoke to her this morning and I asked her that very question. I said, babe, now why would you shoot Zachary, your own husband? And do you know what she said? I just didn't like his looks. I just didn't like his looks. Well, I don't like his looks. But you didn't shoot him. You wouldn't shoot somebody because you don't like their looks. You just wouldn't do that. Oh, I hate to say this. I do hate to say this. But I believe babe is ill. I mean, in her head, ill. Oh, now, Lenny, don't you go saying that. There are plenty of good sane reasons to shoot a person, and I'm sure that Babe had one. Now, what we've got to do, we've got to get ourselves the best lawyer in town. You got any ideas on who the best lawyer in town is? Oh, well, Zachary is, of course, but he's been shot. Well, count him out. Just count him and his whole firm out. Anyhow, you don't have to worry. I already got her law. You did? Mm -hmm. Who? Barnett Lloyd. Andy Lloyd's boy. He just opened up an office here in town, and Uncle Watson said we'd be doing Annie a favor by hiring him up. Doing Annie a favor? Doing Annie a favor? What about Babe? Have you thought about her? Do we want to do her the favor of 30 or 40 years in jail? Uh, don't you snap at me. Just don't snap at me. I'm just trying to do what's right. All this responsibility just keeps falling on my shoulders. And I'm just trying to do what's right. Well, boo hoo hoo. And how in the hell could you send me such a telegram about Babe? Oh, well, if you had a phone way out there in Hollywood, then babe, maybe... Babe, terrible trouble. Stop. I wouldn't have to pay all that money... Jeffrey's been shot. Stop. ...to send you a telegram. Come home immediately. Stop. 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 And what was that that you said about us getting so old? You looked right in my face and you said, my God, we're getting so old. But you didn't mean we, you meant me, didn't you? It's my 30th birthday today. My face is all pinched up. My hair's just falling out in the comb. Lenny, it's your birthday. October 23rd, of course, how could I forget? Happy birthday. Well, it's not. Billy Boyd died last night. He was struck by lightning. He was struck dead. Struck dead? 
What a mess. What a mess. Are you really 30? Means I'm 27 and babe's 24. My God, getting so old. What's the cop doing in the kitchen? No. Oh. Well, I rolled it out when old granddaddy got sick, so I could be close to him at night if he needed something. Is old granddaddy here? Why, no. Old granddaddy's at the hospital. Again? Meg. What? Don't you remember? I wrote you all about it. Old granddad has been in the hospital for three months straight. He has? I wrote to you about it, how he had those blood vessels that was popping in his brain. <sighs> and he was so anxious to hear from you and hear about your singing career. I wrote to you about it and how they have to feed him through those tubes now. Didn't you get my letters? Oh, I don't know, Lenny. I suppose I did. To be honest, sometimes I kind of don't read your letters. What? I'm sorry. It's just that since Christmas, I get these slicing pains in my chest when I read them. I see. I see. Is that why you didn't come home Christmas when old granddaddy sent you the money? Because you hate us so much. We never done all that much to you to make you hate us, so we did it. Oh, Lenny, do you really think I'd be getting slashing pains in my chest if I hated you? If, if I didn't care? Honestly now, do you think I would? No. Okay, then let's drop it. I'm sorry I didn't read your letters, okay? Okay. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Rachel T. Ruth. Nous espérons que vous avez apprécié cette petite nuit de rêverie. Nuestro acto final es Daniela Lucia y Jackie Bellan, interpretando una escena de Alicia en el País de Maravillas, adaptada por Eva Gallien y Florida Fribus. Allora, no penso que Alice abbia bisogno de presentazioni, ma questa scena dalla versione teatrale è quando Alice incontra la regina Blanca nel suo viaggio per tornare a casa. And so we do leave you tonight with the words of Lewis Carroll himself, who of course said, Eines der tiefen Geheimnisse des Lebens Ist das alles, was sie wirklich lohnt? Das ist, was wir für andere tun. Good night. Here's somebody shot being blown off. I'm glad I happened to be in the way. Bread and butter, bread and butter, bread and butter. Am I addressing the White Queen? Well, yes, if you call that addressing. It isn't my notion of a thing at all. If your majesty will only tell me the right way to begin, I will do it as well as I can. But I don't want it done at all. I've been addressing myself for the last two hours. Every single thing is crooked, and she is all over pins. 
May I put your shot straight for you? I don't know if you need it. It's out of temper, I think. I've pinned it here, I've pinned it there, but there's no pleasing it. It can't go straight, you know, if you pin it all on one side. And oh dear me, what a state your hair is in! <laughs> I lost the comb yesterday. Um, you look rather better now. But really, you should have a lady's maid. I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure. Two pence a week and jam every other day. I don't want you to hire me, and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam. Well, I don't want any at any rate today. You couldn't have it if you did want it. The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but never jam today. It must come to jam today sometime. No, it can't. It's jam every other day. Today isn't any other day, you know. I don't understand you. It is dreadfully confusing. Well, that's the effect of living backwards. It always makes one a little giddy at first. Living backwards? I have never heard of such a thing. But there's one great advantage in it. That one's memory works both ways. Mm. I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. Well, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. What sort of things do you remember best? Oh, things that happen the week after next. For instance, there's the king's messenger. He's in prison now, being punished. And the trial doesn't even begin till next Wednesday. And of course, the crime comes of all. Suppose he never commits the crime. Well, that would be all the better, wouldn't it? Of course it would be all the better, but it wouldn't be all the better his being punished. Well, you're wrong there at any rate. Were you ever punished? Only for fault. And you were all the better for it, I know. Yes, but then I had done the things I was punished for. That makes all the difference. But if you hadn't done them, that would have been better still. Better and better and better. There is a mistake somewhere. Oh. oh, oh, my finger's bleeding. What's the matter? Oh. Have you pricked your finger? Oh. I haven't pricked it yet, but I soon shall. Oh. <laughs> Where do you expect to do it? <laughs> Fasten my shawl again. The brooch will come undone directly. Be careful. You're holding it all crooked. Ooh. Ooh. There. That accounts for the bleeding. You see, now you understand the way things happen here. But why aren't you screaming now? Well, I've done all the screaming already. What would be the good of having it all over again? I am glad it's getting light out. I thought night was coming on. I wish I could manage to be glad. Well, I never can remember the rule. You must be very happy living in this wood and being glad whenever you like. Only so very lonely here. Oh. Yeah, like that. Consider what a great girl you are. Consider what a long way you've come today. Consider what a cock it is. Consider anything, only don't cry. Can you keep from crying by considering things? Well, that's the way it's done. Nobody can do two things at once, you know. Let's consider your age to begin with. How old are you? Seven years and a half exactly. You didn't say exactly. I can believe it without that. Let me give you something to believe. I am just 101, five months and a day. I can't believe that. You can't? Try again. Draw a long breath and close your eyes. There is no use in trying. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice. Why, when I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. There goes my shawl again. I've got it. 
now you shall see, shall see me pitting on again all by myself. Then I hope your finger is better now. Oh, much better, much better. Hi, I'm Bridget Dolan. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting us tonight. I wanna to give a big shout out to all the performers who helped me produce this show. I also wanna give a huge, huge thank you to Jackie Balan, Selma Duchanovich, and Brittany Alley. They were my executive producers. They helped me create all the tedious, hard things we had to do behind the scenes. And a big shout out to Carl St. Lucy, who was our tech specialist who helped us seamlessly stream this thing. And to Atlantic Acting School for introducing all of us and giving the tools that we need to create work like this. And also, please, please, please look in the description box below and buy Slavic Soul Party's music. They are the musicians that provided the music in our opening sequence and in our credits you're about to hear. So please support them. They're an amazing band here in Brooklyn. When we can all be in the same room together again, please go see them live. It is worth it, I promise you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Mwah!